Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, I think in my last video, I said that I've been un unwrapping, uh, wrapping up books, about every three books or so, and then, um, I guess in this last month or so, my reading has sort of got away from me, and I have five books to wrap up for you today. Now, one of them I forgot to include in my last wrap up, but that was The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. I think, yeah, I think I showed this in my unboxing video. Um, it was the first family reading crate that I got, and that was the Alaska theme box. And I finally, I think I finally read this last month, maybe. This was a book about four Alaskan teenagers in the 70s. Uh, as far as my feelings on it or what I would rate it as, I mean, it was about middle of the road for me. Um, it was interesting enough, but I guess the problem I had with there being four different characters, and this isn't always an issue with books, because um, I've read plenty of books where there's different perspectives happening throughout the whole book. But there were just a couple characters that I didn't feel like I needed their perspective. I felt like the story would be a, would have been more interesting if we had just cut maybe one or two of those characters out as being a main character or one with a voice uh, and really focused on perspective from maybe the other two. Uh, it, was, it was pretty good. Um, it was a good I guess time passer of a book, but it's not one I don't think I'm ever going to reread, and it's not one that really, um, I don't know, it's not one that sticks with me or is going to stick with me, but I thought it was okay. It was okay. Uh, the four different teenagers, their lives are sort of um, intersecting, you know, throughout the book. They have all come from different backgrounds. Overall, a decent book. I mean, it's it wasn't bad. I liked it. I just... Uh, you know, I read better ones. Let's just put it that way. Now, the next book is Winter Song by S.J. Jones. And this was another family reading crate box. I can't remember. I think this was maybe the March box. Uh, it was like the Fantasy or Monsters box. I didn't unbox that one on video. Um, but it took me a while to finish this book. I'll go ahead and say that. Uh, this was like a fantasy... What is it fantasy? I guess you'd call it fantasy. I'm so I'm still so bad with my book genres. This is about a goblin king and a girl, a not pretty. Uh, I mean, it says throughout the book that she is not like a classically pretty girl, um, but she's very interested in music and composing music in a time or a place where women and girls don't. That's not a valid career choice. Um, but she ha ends up having to go live but I guess basically underground with the Goblin King and uh, they sort of they fall in love with each other even though um, their marriage needs to happen anyways in order to like make sure winter doesn't stay forever I hope I'm like giving you an, an accurate timeline of like how things are happening in this book this was way more intriguing than I thought it was gonna be it took me a while to get into it. I mean, it took several chapters. I think it was the musical language that kind of turned me off just because I don't know that much about uh, classical music and I really didn't feel like I could identify with a character on that front, um, which I realized was a personal thing for me and not something everybody that would read this book uh, would tend to experience. Um, and of course, I realized too that I don't have that much experience with fantasy books. I don't actually read that much. So it was a little bit harder for me um, to embrace goblins and a goblin king. Um, but I did manage to do that. The Bonnie, or not Bonnie, S.J. Jones uh, was able to, you know, bring that to fruition to me where suddenly I did become very interested in the goblin king and the love story that was unfolding uh, between the main character and the goblin king. And I really liked, I really like the character of the Goblin King. He's kind of painted as this um, mini personality type individual. I mean, one minute he's cold and distant or he's mischievous and you're never sure if he's telling the truth. And then the next, he's just this like really sensitive guy that just wants love. And I did like the love story um, aspect of this book. I mean, that is what the essence of the book is. I like that though. I like that it was sort of a, a dark fantasy um, 
sort of, I guess, a romance of some sorts. But I don't want to um, hesitate to use the word romance because that immediately is going to make some people not want to pick up this book. But it was, it was sort of like a romance um, between a goblin king and a young woman. I really enjoyed it though and I would recommend it, um, especially for someone that's wanting to step out of the box. Um, for me, this was an out of the box book for me personally and I really enjoyed it. Well, the next two books I listened to on audio so I don't have them to show you, but uh, one of them was Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. And that is a nonfiction book about everything having to do with women's uh, sexuality, basically, and their sexual health and um, sort of uh, myths, basically, around women's sexuality. I love that book. It was a little dense at some point. I would sort of space out during cer certain parts of it just because it would get really dense, especially with um, the scientific language, but I still really appreciated that part of it. Um, just, you know, it makes it feel more legit, you know, when you have the the science to back up what she's saying. But I would recommend that book to all women. Um, your sister, your aunt, your best friend, your grandmother, your mother. Uh, I sort of brings to light issues you don't really think that you have or that are an issue at all regarding um, your sexuality as a woman and the main per like message throughout the whole book is you are normal this is normal there is no one set way um, that women should approach sex or how they should feel about it or the feelings that we should have I love that there's this whole spectrum of normal and throughout the whole book she's just reassuring you like yes this is normal you are normal there is nothing wrong with you and after listening to this book and as i'm listening to it um there were things that popped up from my past that have been um resolved for a while now but that i really could have used this book um and known uh that i was normal and that I didn't have to worry. Um, she really speaks to that that inner voice in us, that not so pleasant one. Um, for a lot of us uh, that we've gone through maybe as teenagers or young women or maybe on into um, our middle ages or even later than that, uh, that we have worried, um, I'm using a collective we here, that we've worried uh, that, you know, what is wrong with me? I, I don't know. I don't know that many women, but of course I haven't had that many conversations about it. I don't know that many women who haven't at least thought one time, is there something wrong with me? You know, what is, what is wrong? Um, and she really gets rid of that little voice and, and is very reassuring. Um, and that was, it was just such a nice book. And I think uh, Maria over at Read, Create, Repeat Homeschool, uh, she that's one of her nonfiction books that she gets and gives out as gifts and I kind of want to do the same thing I want to give that book to about every woman that I know and care about um, and have them read it because it's invaluable now the last book that I've read is sex object a memoir by Jessica Valenti and technically I have not quite finished it I have I mean I have a few pages left of the last chapter and then the last um, like end notes which I do plan to read I just got this book um, uh, four days ago uh, at the bookstore and I've I'm almost done with it so that's why I'm including it in this video um, this is an excellent book uh, this is a personal memoir by Jessica Valenti and it's about her whole experiences starting from when she's a little girl on up until she has her own little girl and all of her experiences growing up um, and being objectified by the men in her life or the men that really aren't in her life but like random men on the street and it kind of follows that story and that timeline and her personal struggle with it. Uh, she is a feminist writer but I guess what makes this interesting for me um, is she she's very honest about her experiences and she's honest about um, how she feels sort of like a fraud as a feminist that uh, 
she is angry um, about the things she experienced, but when she was in those moments, uh, how her, I guess her own inner social training would make her feel guilty or want to make the man feel better about himself even though what he was saying or doing to her was really awful or unfair. And I will say I did not know so many weird things um, happen or used to happen. I assume this is still an issue on New York City subways. I did not know that exposing yourself was a valid pastime for a lot of men there. I mean, this is one of like the most pervasive themes in the whole memoir is men exposing themselves, um, which is a little disturbing. I can personally say that I have never experienced a man exposing himself to me in public and I don't know how I would react to that or what I would do. Um, but this is a really excellent book. I It's not that thick. Um, I do recommend it to, I don't know, I guess everyone. I would recommend it to everyone. I want my husband to read this book. Um, it really brings to light some of the things that a lot of women have to go through um, and how it just becomes part of our daily life. I can definitely identify with um, some of the things that have happened to her or been said to her and kind of how we as women have been trained to brush it off and just be like, oh, you know, that's the way it is, you know, and this is how you handle this. And then we tell our daughters, you know, oh, well, uh, yeah, that happens. And this is what you do in this situation. Like we just, you know, some of it is just so accepted um, as part of being a woman or a girl and growing up and having to deal with certain attitudes and things that men say to you. And, and it just, I appreciate that it brought those things to light for me. Um, Cause I mean, for me as well, I mean, I, there's certain things that I have just accepted as being sort of normal, but I don't want to accept as being normal. But I really have enjoyed that book and I do highly recommend it, especially for women, but for anyone really. But those are the books I've most recently read. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you all again really soon.